So welcome to this uh, free webinar today uh, for audit. My name is Kizer and uh, we'll be looking at some practice questions for uh, audit. How can we get link for tax? Uh, you will get the link for tax on Saturday because it's on Sunday, it's scheduled for Sunday. All right, so you're focusing, guys, this is how the classes will work. There are three free sessions and there are three free webinars basically. Right, every session will be, uh, you know, will basically be discussing a particular topic. For example, we're starting with planning and risk assessment today, right? And today's session will be on planning and risk assessment. I'll teach you guys how to answer questions on planning and risk assessment. Obviously, because we just have um, two hours, you know, it's approximately a two hour session. Usually, it allows students to, because obviously it takes some time for students to join as well. So that takes away like 30 minutes, honestly, uh, for the session. So um, just to make sure that we're effective, we're, we're attempting this question. In every class, we'll attempt one question every week at the same time. Same time, basically, I started 30 minutes late today, but the ses session was actually scheduled for um, 6.30 IST, right? So we will be basically starting at 6.30 IST only every Friday up until the exam right next week we'll do um audit evidence area from the from the section b questions and then we'll do reporting area from the section b questions all right that's what the hierarchy would be for tomorrow uh, you know saturdays are reserved for fr financial reporting sundays are reserved for tax so those who are willing to join for fr and tax you guys you guys can join tomorrow and day after respectively and today, like I said, it's all audit, right? Now, as you can see on your screen, you guys have a have an exam kit question in front of you, right? And the exam kit question basically allows us to, um, you know, capture. Um, yes, we will. We will be able to do that. Um, basically, the exam questions allow us to get a feel of how the question will kind of come up in your exam and you know we need to make sure that our target is on a few factors before we attempt a question um, you know why even while you're practicing at home or in the exam right one thing guys your your knowledge has to be on point if you feel that you lack because obviously like i said these sessions are purely for um, you know how to attempt a question in the exam especially section b right so it's a very restricted it will give you a very restricted knowledge it doesn't provide you so i'm not teaching you audit over here i'm teaching you how to attempt a, uh, uh, you know how to, uh, how to attempt a question right so the point is you need to be equipped with your knowledge for audit if you're not you need to go back and revise and watch this session as a recorded session. Okay, number one. Number two, you guys need to ensure that whatever issues you have, you get it resolved prior to the scheduled session. For example, if there is any particular topic that you feel you're, you're struggling with, try to get it resolved before the sessions that I've scheduled so that when you sit in the schedule, it's effective for you and you get the most out of it. Right. Third thing is that when you're uh, obviously when you're attempting the questions, just make sure that your focus is entirely on what you know what's 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 going down on the screen. And more than that, what I'm telling you that should go down on the screen, uh, should should go down on the document. Right, guys. Remember one thing. This is a question which has already come up in the exam. So a same question will never appear. In the exam again probably after two three four ten you know ten years by the time you you'll obviously be probably a member you know earning hundreds and thousands of dollars but the point is that as of now as of the more recent time you will not see this question being repeated but a similar question will definitely come up in the exam so we have to make sure that we equip ourselves with the right um right skill to answer questions on these, uh, you know, on these topics. Today's topic, like I said, is planning and risk assessment. 
right? So we will be focusing on planning and risk assessment today. This is the captain exam kit. And from that, you see it's question number 201, right? The, the name of the question is speech. Okay. Now, my suggestion to all my students when I teach them, when you practice in class, is always to look at the requirement before you start reading the case. Okay. Before you start reading the case, look at the requirement. Or if you're very eager to read the case because you're already looking at it, just read the background. That's it. Don't start reading the entire case. Just read the background, then the requirement, and then come back to the case. Why do I you know, ask you to read the requirement first? Is because, see, the requirement basically sets the scope of the question. If I start reading the case, how do I know that it's regarding planning and risk assessment, for example? In an exam, if I start reading the case, how would I know that uh, you know, the, the question is regarding planning and risk assessment? Right? I would never know that until I've read the requirement. It's always important to read the requirement first so that at least you read the question with a purpose. Okay? All of this information, you don't have to memorize it and take it back home. Okay? It's just for the it's just for your use in the exam, and that's it. After that, you can forget about it. You don't really need to memorize it and you know uh, retain this information for a long period of time. It's just this for it's just for this paper only. That's it, right? So always make sure that you have you read the question with purpose. Number one, number two, guys. There are three areas that basically you need to focus on in order to get good marks in your answer number one three key areas okay reading so let me just zoom in good. reading and processing the information okay number one reading and processing the information guys your reading speed and how quick how quickly you process the information that you've read, that's very important. Because if you fail to do that, or if that's your weak point, then you'll definitely struggle because I can, I have, I've seen people in the past reading one situation or one case twice or thrice before they actually understand what's going on. If that's the case, you need to improve your reading skills. You need to improve your processing skills, not from... You know, you can't, you know, you can take help of other resources as well. Try reading articles on a daily basis. Try reading uh, news, news on a daily basis. Try reading storybooks, if you like that, on a daily basis. Just make sure that somehow, you know, through more reading, you basically improve the first thing. Reading and processing of the information. Okay? Then, second extracting relevant points as per the requirement. Think about it logically. Are you answering all requirements at once? Are you answering, for example, I don't know what requirements of this question, I, you know, I, don't, I don't know the requirements of this question so far because I just opened up the question and it's been here since you guys, you know, you guys can see that I haven't scrolled down, right? The point is, I don't know what the requirements are. If I don't know what the requirements are, my reading of the question, of the case, has no purpose. Because I don't know what I have to answer. And I don't know why I'm reading this case. Make sense? So extracting relevant points as per the requirement, that means, number one, you need to realize that you're not attempting all requirements at once. You're not attempting part A, B, C, D, whatever number of requirements you have for a given question, you're not attempting all of them at once, right? You will attempt requirement A first or B first or C first, whatever it is, right? Whatever uh, hierarchy you feel comfortable with, but you will attempt one requirement at a time. So at least know what that requirement is so that, like I said, your reading and processing of the information is done with a purpose. Because if, it, if you don't do that with a purpose, you're wasting your time. And I'm not even kidding. You cannot even, you can't afford to waste even a single minute in the exam. Every minute, every 30 seconds, every second, I believe counts. Okay. 
especially in, in an exam which is completely theoretical. You just have to like literally type, type, type. That's it. Numbers won't matter a lot. Typing, your typing speed should be good enough, by the way. So reading and processing the information, make sure that what you read, what you process is with a purpose and you cannot do that without having to know the requirement. Okay. Next, very important. Presentation. You believe your typing speed is slow? Improve it. Uh, there are a lot of typing tests out there. Google it. You'll find them. Find the typing tests. Do you know? Do those typing tests. Improve it. Okay. You feel that you know your thoughts are not structured when you're forming an answer because you you're reading and processing the information does not mean that you're forming an answer there and then. Processing the information means trying to understand what's going on in the case. Then extracting relevant points as per the requirement. That means you should know what information to exclude, what to include in order to answer. For example, if it's a six marks uh, requirement. Now for a six marks requirements, we, we, you know, requirement, would you end up writing 20 points? No, obviously not, right? You can't write 20 points for a six mark requirement. If it's a six mark, six mark requirement, simple one mark per valid point, six points, and you're done. That's it. If you feel, let's say, if you feel uh, less confident about one or two of your points, then write eight points just to be on the safe side. Write seven points just to be on the safe side, right? But don't waste your time writing more. And you will only, like I said, you will only know that if you know how to present the information relevant to your answer, okay? You need to make sure that your structure of the answer, the structure that you have of your answer should first of all mentally be well thought and then you put it on the document word or excel whatever it is okay because without that you will end up making mistakes mistakes like i said mistakes does not mean that you end up uh, messing up the question which is a possibility by the way but it has a lower probability lower possibility higher probability is that you end up basically writing down irrelevant points, which will not get you the marks, number one, and will also waste your time. So that's like a uh, double loss, make sense? So that's straight away a double loss. You're writing irrelevant points, it's not getting you any marks, so that's loss into one, and then you're also wasting your time writing those points, so that's loss into two. So that's lo loss twice, make sense? And that will definitely put a lot of pressure on you to answer the other parts of the question or other questions, you know, really well. Which again, if you, there's one thing that a lot of students do, number one, they don't phase out their effort in the paper. They put a lot of effort in section A and then by the time they reach section B, either they're overconfident or they're completely frustrated. Either ways, you will lose marks and you will lose time. So phase out your effort over the paper. It's a very important factor. If you put a lot of effort in section A and just, you know, uh, let it be in section B or you put a lot of effort in section B and just be very carefree in section A, guys, that will mess up. Don't be overconfident. Don't get frustrated. If you feel section B was, wasn't that good, right? Put more effort in section A. Make sure that you read, uh, you know, you have that, uh, skill to sideline your emotions and think totally from your mind because that will help you phase out your effort over the period of time, over the period of the paper's time, right? Now, we're starting with the question over here, okay? And again, like I said, if you feel the urge to read the case first, read the background, that's it and then read the requirement, come back to the case. Like I said, everything that you read needs to have a purpose behind it. Uh, it we, we are here for a purpose. We need to pass the paper. Definitely everything that we do, every act we perform should be a step forward towards that, right? So now if, you're, if I read the requirement, right, it says, I'm going to use a highlighter as well. It is 1st July 20x5. You are an audit supervisor. 
with apricot and company and have been assigned to audit to the audit of peach and co uh, peach company a soft drinks manufacturer which sells to wholesale customers so you have a soft drinks manufacturer which sells to wholesale customers understanding you you guys know that planning and risk assessment the most important aspect is to understand what the business is about understand what your client is about right you are currently planning the year end audit for the year ending again year end is extremely important year ending 31st august 20x5 you will get some questions which will basically state the to, uh, state the date after the year end and in some questions you'll see that the date is before the year end so year has not ended yet because it's first july today right first july 20x5 and I have received the following notes from the audit engagement partner. Materiality for the draft financial statements has been calculated as 153,000, which is 5% of PBT. Guys, there's a reason why they say material for the draft financial statements because the financials have not been finalized yet, right? We're, we're still doing the audit. Number one, number two. Um, the good part about this question is that they've already calculated the materiality for you, right? Otherwise, if in a question they haven't given, they, let's say for example, they don't give you the materiality, you can calculate it 5% to 10% of PBT, 1% to 2% of assets, and 0.5 to 1% of revenue, right? These are three criteria according to which you can calculate your materiality. Now, are we done with the background? Yes, we're, we're done. We know what the background is. We're dealing with the soft drinks manufacturer who sells to wholesale customers, not to the final consumers. Here in is 31st, August 20X5, materiality is set at 5% of PBT, which is $153,000 for the year. So we knew that we, we know the background information now, right? Now let's move on. Like I said, today's objective is what? Planning and risk assessment. So we're attempting the 16 mark requirement right now. Okay. Describe eight audit risks and explain the auditor's response to each risk in planning the audit of each and co. Guys, remember one thing, our objective with respect to the, uh, you know, to the question now, it's been decided, it's been designed, it's already there, describe. A lot of people, a lot of people fail to understand the meaning of describe, okay? Description, when they say describe or when they say description, give a description, that means you have to lay out based on the facts of the case the points that will basically allow to explain those facts for example it's when i say describe it's like identify and explain description or describe can be broken down into two aspects identify and explain that's what description means you first identify what the relevant facts of the case are and based on that you explain it and based on the context, you explain it because the context over here is what? Audit risks. Now imagine how easy it is for us to do this. Why? Because let's try to break this down. You see a two column format, audit risk, audit response. Yes. I believe that based on the risks and response, you will get one mark for risk one mark for response. That means for every point, you'll get two marks. The total questions is 16 marks. 16 divided by two, eight points minimum. And I would say maximum as well. Minimum, who, those who are targeting 100% of the question, for them it's minimum. Those who are targeting uh, you know, from the other angle, then obviously for you, it's maximum, right? The point is that, like I said, if there's any point you feel less confident about, try and write another point. Won't take away much of, you know, won't take away 
much of your time, number one, and it might also add value to your answer. The examiner might give you an ex, you know, not extra marks. Obviously, you cannot go beyond 16, but at least recognize your effort for doing that. So a weaker point may be ignored and a better point could be scored. Number one. Number two. Like I said, description means what? First, identify. A lot of people, again, make mistakes. What mistake? They try to look for some points, some, you know, points from, I don't know, what kind of case. Identification is always from the case. It's an effortless job. I'm not even kidding. It's an effortless job to identify. There is no effort whatsoever in identifying any point. Although, like I said, you need to know the scope of the question in order to identify the right point. And then explain. Yes, when you explain, you basically tell the implications, the consequences of something that has been done or something that has not been done yet. So there would be, in, in, a, in a case where it's talking about audit risks, Either something wrong would have, you know, they would have already done something wrong or they would have, you know, uh, created an environment around that transaction, which could, you know, which could allow them to do something wrong or which could basically make them do something wrong, right? That's one. Second, guys, remember one thing that the audit risks, you have to realize the scope of the question. Please don't ignore that. Audit risk is... Has, a, has such a big scope. Imagine your audit risk is made up of how many things? Inherent. Yeah. So you've got inherent risk multiplied by control risk multiplied by detection risk. That means inherent risk which is also called business risk. If there is any business risk, it could become an audit risk. Yes. If there is any risk of material misstatement, which is made up of inherent and control risk, it could become an audit risk. And then finally, if you look at the top equation, the complete equation, that I mean, that's obviously an audit risk. Right, that completes the fact of audit risk. So, if you find any weaknesses in the procedures performed by the auditor, that also adds to your audit risk. So, imagine the scope of the question. The scope of the question is huge. And since the scope of the question is huge, it will allow you to target or to basically form your answers in a much easier way. Like I said, identification. I'm just talking about description right now. Identify and explain. When I say identify and explain, that means identification, I said, is an, is, it's an effortless job. It is directly copy-paste. Not even in your own words, but copy-paste from the case. Copy-paste means, for example, in order to fund the development of the new production process and the purchase of new machinery, each company obtained an interest-bearing bank loan of 1.2 million. If, let's say, there was any risk over here, which I think we'll read the entire thing and we'll see if there's a risk. But for now, just for the sake of explanation, copy this, paste it as it is. No problem. But how well do you see marks are not for identification. Marks are basically the one mark that I've talked about. Marks are for explanation. Okay. You explain it in the right way. Link it to the, link it to what you've identified. Not come up with a with a story of your own. Obviously, you link your explanation to what you've identified in the right context. You'll get it. Make sense? All right, guys. Can you please acknowledge what I just explained to you on the chat? If you guys are. Um, Anybody ignores on the chat? All right, thank you. I can see that you guys are focusing. Uh, that's good. 
All right. Now, these were these were basically the theoretical aspects of how to come up with the right answer. Right. Now, let's try and practically apply it. Okay. Our thought process has to be really clear. Like I said, if we are, um, you know, remember one thing: every student has a different mindset. So I, I can't just, uh, you know, I won't say that. Uh, I won't restrict you on it, but you need to understand that uh, we, when we basically look at the question paper, right, our mind, our mind continuously signals us to try and look at what we've been tested on in the entire paper, in the entire paper. Obviously, we can't read through every section A question because that's well structured. Well structured means that it's, it's, it's broken into different aspects, right? It's it's very, uh, you know, uh, you know, the questions are very uh, the case, and plus then five separate questions on every case. That's a very tough job to do if you just go over all at once. That's even that's a, that's a stupid way to do, uh, you know, attempt it. But at least for section B, you can know what you've been tested on. If that's the case, if you're one of them that, you know, uh, when you start a paper, it starts, you know, your mind starts signaling you to just, you know, it starts questioning what's coming in, you know, what's, what you've been tested on. No problem. Take two minutes, three minutes, you know, uh, just basically scan out your fare. Make sense? You know, uh, phase it out. Take out your fare. Go and look at what you've been tested on. Go over the entire paper, not section A. You can't do that. Like I said, strictly, I'm telling you not to do that. But section B, at least read requirements so that you know what, what uh, you've been tested on in the entire paper from section B's perspective. And then you can relax, control your nerves, go back, start from the, start from wherever you want to. And not necessarily section A, but start from wherever you want to. Okay. My recommendation start from section A because the chronological order is always something that helps a, a lot of students. Okay. So like I said, I'm going to repeat it. Start from wherever you want to recommendation is starting from section A, but if you're one of the students who, you know, who you think that if I look at a paper or if I open up the question, if I start my exam, I've clicked the start button and when I start my exam, my mind continuous, continuously starts bothering me or, you know, poking me about, okay, fine, please go and check what you've been tested on and all those things, all those kind of thoughts start coming, coming up in your mind, then the best way to target or to cater that is to actually do what your mind is telling you to. At that time, that is the time where you need your mind to be 100% there. You can't fight against it. If your mind is telling you to go and check what requirements you've been tested on in section B because it will keep bothering you, just go and check it. Well, how much time will it take? Two minutes, three minutes, five minutes? That's all right. At least those five minutes will allow you to be at peace for the rest of the time in your paper. Okay? Because I get complaints, that's why I'm discussing this issue. I get a lot of complaints from students that whenever I start a paper, my mind you know, starts bothering me about uh, you know, check the page, check what's coming in, check, check what you've been tested on, check the other section B questions, check, check the first question, second question, blah, blah, blah. That's all right. Take five minutes. Do that for section B. You can't do that for section A. All right, because section A, every case has five questions, right? So that's a very difficult task for section A. You know, at the end of the day, you have to attend the entire paper. So if you don't have the nerves to, uh, you know, sit back and just do what you're, on right now, just attempt the question that you're on right now. Forget the rest of, forget about the rest of the paper. That's all right. Take five minutes, scan through the paper, and come back. No problem, because like I said, you need your mind to be present 100% at that time for the for three and uh, 3.25 hours that you're in the exam hall, right? Now, coming back to the case, I'm going to start reading the case. Make sure that you guys are with me. And um, I'm going to try and dissect it as much as I can. Second.
this is how they want us to they'll obviously give it give the structure to you in the all right now we already read the background 153 materiality which represents 5% of pbt soft drinks manufacturer selling to wholesale customers today is first like 20x5 year end is 31st august 20x5 that much we can retain that's background information and i, I believe it's very important for us to retain that information right now A new accounting system was introduced via direct, by the way, one thing before I, uh, when I move on, there is a possibility that you end up finding the first point, first audit risk in the background paragraph only. There is a possibility that you might end up finding the first risk in the background paragraph only. What, what could that first risk b any idea guys any idea what that first risk could be new client perfect new audit client now because it's not in the case so i'm not going to write it in detail but i'll just tell you how you can capture the marks where there is a new audit client it will most likely be given to you in the background information only that it's a new audit line you're dealing with right now if it's a new audit line okay always make sure that you write down the headings of the risk that you are about to put out right why because that allows you to separate one point from the other number one number two for example let's say i'm not like i said in this situation in this case you, the client is not new Otherwise, they would have told me. But if it was a new audit client, for that reason, I'm just putting out a, a two pointers, two universal points. Any idea what those universal points are, though? If it's a new audit client, there are two universal points, two universal risks. Any idea what those risks are? Detection risk? No. No financials available. No, that's not the case. No financials available. We are definitely you will have financials available. That's what you're auditing. If the financials are not available, remember, just go back to your notes. Preconditions of audit. If the financials are not available and an applicable financial reporting framework is not available, you can't accept audit. Pre that's a precondition of audit, guys. Okay. Unknown environment. Uh Yes, the right term, like Hosanna said, uh, detection risk because of lack of knowledge of the environment. And there was there was a second one I was looking at when I was trying to look at. Kalpana mentioned opening balance may be misstated. That means there is a risk of opening balances. Okay, exactly. Auditor may not have a clear understanding of the business and its environment. Right. So two audit risks if now two guys two audit risks means what one risk one response second risk second response so under one heading which is new audit line you end up getting four marks right you end up getting four marks four out of 16 is what 25 percent of the question is already done imagine that's how easy it is under one heading only we get four marks, four out of 16 is one fourth, which is 25% of the question already done. That's how easy it is. And that's how quick you can be, right? Like I said, practice, okay? So just putting out these points because it's not relevant to the case, but I'm just gonna put it out so that you can uh, use, it if you use it for other questions as well. One is the lack lack of understanding of the business and its environment right because of which 
detection risk will increase. That's not how you write a point, guys. Like I said, and I'm repeating it again and again, I don't want anyone to come to me after and just tell me that, you know, that the, the way you've written the first point is very different to the way you're, you've written the second, third, fourth point, okay? I'm writing this because it's just for your knowledge. It's not from the case. The case is not about a new audit line, okay? And the opening balance, guys, remember one thing. Um, I got the right suggestion that the opening balance, there will be an issue with the opening balance, but you can't right now with the knowledge that the case has given you, you can't say if it's overstated or understated. Okay. So don't use these terms. Yes. Misstated. Exactly. Right now you don't have the, you don't have enough knowledge to declare a balance as an overstatement or an understatement. Okay. You, the case hasn't given you that knowledge. The case does, it hasn't given you that information, sorry. Okay. Because you don't have that information, you can't state whether it's over or under. You just simply say that it's misstated. So there is a probability that the opening balance, now choice of words. If I use will be misstated, that's entirely wrong. Okay. Opening balance, when you always, when you talk about a potential, a probability, you say may be misstated, right? Because like I said, you don't have enough information in the case for it. You don't have enough information in the case for you to establish that it actually is misstated, right? Yeah, exactly. It could be misstated or it may be misstated. Now, coming to the actual issue from the case, it says a new accounting system was introduced via direct changeover in March 20x5. Direct changeover basically refers to a new system is implemented and the data is transferred directly to the new system. It had been successfully tested prior to its implementation. That's good. And management had such confidence in the new system that they did not consider it necessary to undertake further testing after implementation. That means pre-implementation testing has been done. Yes, that's good. That should be. But post-implement testing has not been done. Any suggestions why this is, or why this could be a risk? Any suggestion, guys? First of all, my issue is, again, a lot of people also, I get questions, what should be the heading? What do you mean, what should be the heading? Like I said, identification is from the case. It's 100% from the case. You don't have to come up with even a single word of your own. Okay. Everything, every point you identify, not explain, identify is from the case. Okay. So now the first point is like mentioned in the chat, new accounting system. I know that there is a problem with this new accounting system, right? But will I some, you know, a lot of students I see and I, when I check the answers, they are very fast at reaching conclusions. You can't just conclude that there's something wrong. You need to reflect you have to see the words you choose reflect what you're thinking. Okay. So now you would say that first of all, like I said, identification is a criteria. Okay. So a new accounting system, a new accounting system was introduced. Doesn't really matter if I write via direct changeover or not, because that's not where the risk is, right? In March 20x5, which is within our current year, by the way, right? And I use the term post implementation, if you remember. I just use the term what? Post implementation. A new organic system was introduced in March 20x5, which was only tested pre implementation and no testing was performed post implementation. If you think that 
these pre post implementation stuff these things are jargons forget about it just explain in the best possible way this is not expression is identification but i'm just telling you that if you if you need if you're struggling with choosing the right words just do whatever you can effortlessly okay it has to be effortless all right because the real deal is in the explanation now why do you think that's a risk guys come on any idea why it's a risk their possible loss of data when transferring from old to new system yes or major information skip omitted you can say yes there can be some info not transferred yes system may be corrupted yes all three risks are relevant honestly number one loss of data okay that means data migration it's called the term is data migration right there's a possibility that your data exactly can it corrupt it can it corrupt master file uh, yes if you want to be so specific it can obviously it can anything can happen it's a new system right it's not been tested post implementation so anything can happen so that's also right opening balance on new kind of could be yes that's also right kevin opening balance issues could also be there like i said these are all possible risks loss of information 100% can be there so these are all possible risks i'm going to draft a few for me Two most relevant risks. I feel because I've practically seen uh, changeover happening, so I know that there are two possible risks. One, because of poor data migration techniques, you could have you could see loss of data, and second, that it could lead to omission of balances, including the opening balance. So there is a process flow. There is a process flow to the information, right? So there is a risk. I don't know why it's in bold? There is a risk. Right now, how would I respond to this? I've this is where I get my one mark. Okay, there's there was one uh, valid point. There was one other valid point as well, which was related to the operational effectiveness of the system. That's also valid. I'm not saying that it's not, but I chose not to write it because you know, I think that's. Uh, you know, it's been explained. My point has been explained. It's been delivered across to the examiner, so it's done. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. Two to three, two or three risks for no, no. For example, if I like, I told you new audit line. These are two separate risks. Each risk identified and explained will get me a mark, and then its response will get me another mark. So that's two marks. So for this. For example, one heading, two risks. That's actually getting me four marks. Make sense? That's why I said 25% of the paper, 25% of the requirement has already been attempted. It's done with, right? Guys, any suggestions on the on the response to this? How would you respond to it? Whenever there is a new system, universal response honestly starts with two things in fact starts and ends at two things right just to make it very simple number one no but if the data is not there emmer if the data is not there what kind of sample will you extract the sample will not be a representative of the true population make sense exactly walk through 
not of a transaction, but of the system and how the data migration take, uh, took place, right? Flowchart of the new system is also a good option, right? You can do that as well. So first of all, the audit team should perform detailed walkthroughs. of the to understand how the new system works and should also now look at this perform detailed substantive testing to ensure that complete data without any loss. Make sense? Now, it's not just about, uh, you can say that to ensure that complete and accurate data. One factor is complete. That means I want all ledgers to be uh, migrated to the new system. Then I want all ledgers with the right balances to be migrated to the system. What if the balance is there? But instead of, look at this. What if the balance is there, the opening balance in the old system of a uh, payables ledger was, let's say, um, 58. And when the data was migrated, the opening balance is still there, but now it's 85. You understand? So, although you may claim that the opening balance is in the previous system as well as the new system, but the problem is it's not accurate. The accurate balance was 58. The new system reflects 85. How is it that the, you know, there's an error of transposition that you guys have learned in your prior studies, makes sense. So substantive testing, yes. Detailed substantive testing. Detailed substantive testing. At uh, substantive testing basically refers to performing detailed testing as a whole of the system. Make sense? Of how you uh, get your uh, uh, knowledge regarding what the system is about. That is, that is part of substantive only, right? Now, next. Uh, no, Fatma, you will only get two marks for this. One and one. That's two marks. All right, four marks were for, uh, um, you know, four marks were for this. Where I had two separate risks identified and two separate responses to each of the risks. Okay. So you can say that if if you want to split it, that's one mark for explanation, half a mark for identification, half a mark for explanation. Right. But I usually, because uh, you know, I understand how the student's mind work, you know, I will always say that this 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 identification has no marks. Just assume that this identification is no marks. Explanation has one mark. So the entire burden is on explanation. And since the entire burden is on explanation, you will definitely try to identify the right point in order to make sure that your explanation is also right. Get it? That's the logic. Now, the next point says each company has been developing a new production process which will help to reduce sugar in its drinks by 50%. Amazing. Development commenced on 1st November 20X4. 1st November 20X4 is within the year, right? Because our uh, year started on 1st September 20X4. So that's within the year. And the total amount capitalized was 0.8 million, which is definitely material, right? Because uh, materiality was calculated as 153,000 only. On 1st May 20X5, the Food Safety Authority approved the process and production of the new reduced sugar soft drinks commenced. When did it commence? On the 1st of 
me right now this is where you will definitely apply there are multiple risks over here okay but like i said i will not force you to think that one paragraph could have multiple risks i would want you to move on with the process so i'll obviously do what i expect my students to do in the exam i will just identify one best risk over here and that's it now this is where your accounting knowledge also comes in okay your accounting knowledge uh, with respect to any idea what it is guys in kind classification and expenditure between research and development leading to overstatement of nc and profits good this is completely related to development costs as per is you don't need to guys you don't have you don't get any marks for mentioning the number and the name of the accounting or auditing standard there are no marks whatsoever if someone asks you to act smart only act smart where you get marks guys come on why would you waste your you know mind at so at something that will not get you the marks mentioning the number and the name of the accounting or auditing standards does not get you the marks there's a higher chance that you might end up putting the wrong name and number or the right number in the wrong name or the right name and the wrong or the wrong number make sense so don't do that don't take that risk it's not worth it uh i'm coming to that i'm coming to how it's a how it could be a risk guys again okay one more thing sorry you also have to understand that the risks we are talking about risk means something that could potentially go wrong does not mean that it has already gone wrong do you understand what i'm trying to say something that has already gone wrong something that has already been misstated is not a risk anymore it's a loss something that has already been misstated it's an error it's fraud it's already done risk is something that could potentially go wrong okay so again it also allows us to define redefine i would say the scope of the question if something has already gone wrong clear cut marks for it literally not even kidding crystal clear marks for it just identify explain and move on with with, a, with an appropriate response obviously the difficulty is where you have to identify something that could potentially go wrong okay 0.8 million basically is 800000 0.8 million translates to 800000 right this amount it is total amount capitalized was 0.8 million yes and the development commenced on 1st november 2x4 so there is a development criteria as per yes sofian the webinar is being recorded uh you'll get the recording after the you know after once it ends now the point is like i said uh you you commence your development on 1st november 2x4 the problem is that the development has a certain you know it's uh, as per i said here there are certain criteria you have to satisfy in order for you to capitalize the cost one of them is your ability legal financial operational ability to actually use this formula or this process or either either use it or sell it the problem is before 1st may 20x5 before the food safety authority approved the process you cannot claim of having the ability to do it you didn't have the legal ability to use this process or to sell this process to someone else license it out you didn't have that ability because the food safety authority did not approve it make sense approval food safety authority is what it's a legal body right without legal authorization although you're developing the process you're developing the new production process i agree no problem in that but as per the criteria if you don't have the um, uh, you know the, the ability although the intention is there the technical feasibility is there financial viability is there 
future economic expected future economic benefits could be there right cost can be reliably measured all conditions are there but the ability that's a, that's in the question right that's what you, that's what we have to uh, bring into question like i said does not necessarily mean that it's wrong okay it does not necessarily mean that it's wrong we just have to ensure that um, you know the risks are catered for okay we catered with risks okay now Point eight million. Point eight million was capitalized, despite the fact that the Food Safety Authority approved the process on the first of May, twenty five. Now you might think that this is a very lengthy way to identify it and there's a shorter way. If you have a shorter way, do that. I would want my examiner to know that I have the capacity or the capability to explain and not explain basically to identify with the right connection. What if I said development commence on 1st MA24 and the total amount of 0.8 million dollars, which is material? That's it. How like how's your mind working? You need to tell that to the examiner. How are you connecting the dots? Tell that to the examiner. I'm connecting this to when the Food Safety Authority approved it. And based on that, I'll build up my explanation. Do you guys understand? Uh, you can copy paste, but like I said, copy paste does not literally mean copy paste, like highlight and then control C, control V. Don't do that. Just try to make sure copy paste means that take the, take all the facts from the case. That's it. That is what, that is what I meant by copy paste. Basically take all the facts from the case. You don't have to write anything from your own understanding. Okay. So you can say that there's a risk that the research may, may also have been capitalized. To be capitalized. Now, any idea how or what procedure will I prefer? What uh, response should I give over here? Any idea, guys?
should inspect approvals from food authority. That's a procedure. That's a very specific procedure that you'll perform. Um, right now, the concern is how would you respond to this risk? You can obviously obtain uh, the approval, but the point is that um, show reversal of the MP. Okay. All right, your suggestions are, you know, I can, I, I think that these are good suggestions. And uh, uh, well, what, what I'm trying to understand is your thought process when you, when you give me that, you know, when you give me those points, right? So what you can say is that, very simple where like i said i'm going to make sure that we keep it simple right so obtain the breakdown of the costs capitalized and ensure it is in line with the accounting policy of the management and Uh, you can say in line with the accountability management and the accounting standards. Right? So, obtain the data on the cost, capitalize, and ensure it is in line with the accounting policy, not of the management, set by the management, sorry. Set by the management and the accounting standard. And obviously, this will help us understand what? Whether the right costs have been capitalized or not. Make sense? So I believe this should get you your one mark, okay? I think there's one more point I would, in fact, I'm not gonna talk about it. I, I, I'm just gonna give you a hint, okay? As per IS 38, now obviously, like I said, you need the accounting knowledge over here, right? didn't get your last point of response. The last point says any cost which has been incorrectly capitalized should be immediately written off to the profit and loss statement. That means it should immediately be expensed out. Written off means expensed out. So I can say it should be immediately expensed out. Does that make sense now? Guys, does that make sense? Okay. But then when we will further expense it? Further expense it basically, see, the development has already taken place, right? The point that I'm trying to explain in this response is that obtain the breakdown. Look at the cost you've capitalized. If any cost which is not in line with IS38 and should not be uh, capitalized, fine. Remove it from the from I from the capitalized cost of intangible asset. Remove it and charge it to the profit and loss. Expense it to the profit and loss. Write it off to the profit and loss. Make sense? Now, like I said, there's one more point, but in line with the accounting knowledge. IS 38 says that once the development has been substantially completed and the product is available for use or sale, you start amortizing the development cost over its useful life. That's what our accounting standard tells us, right? Have they 
anywhere in the case discussed about the amortization of this development cost, although it has been completed and it has it is now being used. It says on 1st May 2025, the Food Safety Authority approved the process and the production and production of the new reduced sugar soft drinks commenced. You are now basically making it available for uh, it's it's being used for the production, right? So the question is, are you amortizing it? If yes, good. If no, you know, whatever it is, the point is it's still a risk, right? So you need to talk about it. Talk about it from the perspective that after the capitalized development cost is available for use or sale, the development cost should be amortized over its respective useful life, over its useful life, basically, right? And the risk is that we don't see any uh, amortization being done or it being discussed or in inappropriate useful life, incorrect useful life may be used for the amortization. That's also a possibility, right? Based on that, what will your response be? Any suggestions on the response, guys? The auditor should do what in this situation? Obviously, it's not my asset. So the only thing I can do is discuss the, um, you know, discuss the useful life with the management. I have to discuss the useful life with the management, number one. Number two, I have to assess what basis, what criteria, what methodology the management used in order to get that useful life and whether it's in line with the accounting standard or not. Simple. Because you can't, it's not your job, number one. And you don't have that information. You don't, even you don't have the, uh, you don't, you don't have the access to that source of information, which will tell you what the useful life of this asset will be. Because number one, it's not your business. It's not your business to know from that source. Management is there. They've made a, they've made an assessment. Look at what their assessment is. Break it down. See if it's in line with the accounting standard. That's it. That's your response. Okay. Next. It says, Peach Company has inventories of high sugar drinks costing 227,000. Guys, if you have that skill to connect different points of a case, you will always end up getting, you'll always end up presenting uh, good answers. We just discussed that these guys have introduced a new production process that is reducing 50% of the sugar content in the drink. Now, what are, they, what are they telling us? Peach company has inventories of high sugar drinks costing $227,000. That's material. That is material, guys. That's material. How do I know it's material? Because my materiality has been set at $153,000. So that's material. Which it can no longer sell. It says which it can no longer sell in its home market due to lack of demand. The directors believe Peach Company can sell the remaining inventories to an international customer at a price that marginally exceeds cost. But Peach Company will be responsible for all costs relating to the delivery and shipping of the drinks, another accounting standard, IAS2, inventories, lower of cost, or NRV. NRV is selling price minus cost to sell. Tomorrow when we do the FR, uh, tomorrow when we have session of FR, you'll know that there's a lot of accounting standard knowledge that is implemented over here, right? So the problem over here, that uh, my concern over here is the risk of inventory and its valuation. I hope that makes sense, right? So the criteria over here or the issue over here is uh, I would rather put it out in, put out a heading of 
inventory valuation. Or I could also say that you, know, you can put out any heading that allows you to explain the point. That's the, that's the criteria. So, for example, um, lack of demand of inventory, or you know, sale of inventory. Any any heading. That's not a problem, right? Now, how will I explain it? The company has high level has you can write down the worth as well just to ensure that the examiner knows that you value the information they they're giving they're giving you right the company has high level of inventories for a product now i'm writing uh, see i'm writing this down in my own words not directly copy pasting from the case just to make sure that the students who are not comfortable in copying copy pasting from the case they're also catered okay because like i said every student has a different mindset some are not comfortable I, i've had students who literally told me that they're not comfortable copy pasting from the case because they feel from the prior studies o levels a levels or you know their respective boards that you know we were taught not to copy based on the case in our English comprehension or English, or, you know whatever it is, creative writing. No, not creative writing, but comprehension and stuff, right? So if it's okay, like I said, we're not here to fight our mental strengths. If it's a mental strength for you to always come up with a uh, with 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 a narration of your own, that's good, fine, no problem. I'm writing on a point for you guys, right? So the company has a uh, has high level of invention for a product that has seen or witnessed a decline in demand. Right now, obviously, that is a concern for me. Right, and uh, the directors believe. That this and other inventory can be sold internationally, right? The problem is internationally, but there is a risk that As now, if you see, guys, remember one thing I'm not trying to confuse you over here. In all the previous points, you can see identification, risk, identification, risk. This is this point, the way I'm structuring it is for the students who feel comfortable in, you know, you can say that in their own language and in their own explanation, in their own narration. It's for them. Okay. For those who are more comfortable with this structure, go ahead and write an answer like this. No problem. Right. I have to cater the audience, not just one specific type of audience, but everyone. Right. So, directors that this, uh, directors believe that this uh, inventory can be sold nationally, but there's a risk that NRV will be lower than the cost as the selling price. is you can say that marginally exceeds the cost right same price marginally exceeds the cost and who will bear the transportation cost um yes i believe the examiner the way the examiner structures out the information for you you will be able to use every case, every paragraph from the, almost every paragraph from the case to identify at least one point, to identify at least one risk. For example, in the previous paragraph, development, right? I identified two risks. Although I just mentioned one because I told you that 
you know, you can come up with the, I don't want to force it, right? I identified two risks. One was related to the wrong capitalization, potential, potentially wrong capitalization. And the second one was related to inappropriate, incorrect amortization based on the, based on in, incorrect uh, useful life. So similarly, well, if, 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 if let's say the client is new, you can always come up with two points. The, the thing is that from a paragraph, they structure it out. Every paragraph contains new information. And new information brings in a new risk. At least one, right? Uh, an RB lower than the cost C. The, the point is over here, if you look at the details, details of the question, price at which you're selling to your international customers marginally exceeds, let's say, your cost is $5. You're selling it for $7, right? You charge your customer $7. Your cost of production is $5. But because you are also bearing the cost of delivery and transportation, let's say that's $3, right? NRV is price minus cost to sell and cost to convert. So when I minus this, I end up getting NRV lower than the cost. That is what it means by NRV being lower than the cost. Right. So you can obviously, like I said, I've used statements from the case. I have used statements of my own. You know, everything is possible. Right. It's just that your explanation has to be uh, good enough to get you the marks. Okay. Now, these are the guys, <clears throat> these are a few points, obviously, because um, unfortunately we started late. So I'll be able to cater a few points and I'll obviously tell you what other paragraphs, the, you know, the risks that other paragraphs entail, right? And uh, on that note, we'll end the session after this point because um, I'm, you know, I'm getting messages that other students got other classes as well. Although the session is being recorded, um, in the next session that we'll have, which is next Friday, I'll be giving in, uh, you know, we'll try to extend this, that, that session so that we can cater. We'll start early. We'll cater this and we'll do the audit evidence part, right? Because obviously I'm, I've started getting messages that, you know, we're leaving because, you know, we've got other sessions to attend. That's all right. Um, how would I cater the, how would I, how would I come up with a response for this? Um, any idea? What, like, what, what, what should I respond to as an auditor? Right. So over here, I've mentioned the directors believe that this inventory can be sold nationally, but there's a risk that NRV will be lower than the cost as selling selling price marginally exceeds the cost. And you can finally conclude. Also, you can add to this as a result. The closing inventory may be. The closing inventory and gross profit. Okay. What is your suggestion on the response? So first of all, if you want to obtain the breakdown, you can also say that obtain the obtain or discuss 
with management and obtain any contract established with the international customers to gain an understanding of the price agreed right then what you can do is obtain the breakdown of the I'm writing in, 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 a, in a lot of detail because there's an explanation of an accounting standard. You don't need to write this in this one's detail. It's just for your learning, basically, right? The reason I'm writing this in a lot of detail is so that you understand that you, if you come from any angle, but you include the information that I've mentioned, you will get the marks, okay? You can come from any angle you want to, making sure that this information that I've given out over here is in your answer, you'll get the marks, okay? Does that make sense? Guys, any questions that you might have? Now, what I have uh, done in the past as well, and it's been helpful for my students, you see one, two, three, and four, four paragraphs, right? Those who are interested, you can write, because obviously we're on this case right now. I don't want you to start a new case right now. We're on this case. Try and identify how many points have we identified? One. Two, three, I will count as, that as two points because one was related to this and the other one that I mentioned was, I'm just going to mention it over here, was related to uh, amortization. Okay. So one, two, three, four, right? That means eight marks we've already attempted. 50% of the question, 50% of the requirement we've attempted. Yes. The remaining four points, I want you guys to come up with it and send me your answers so that I can check those who want. This is only for those who want a review on their answers and their writing style. Okay. Because we're already on this case, I don't want to start. I don't want you to start a new case. So stick to this case and we will, uh, you know, I'm going to mark your uh, answers with respect to this case, right? Like I said, one paragraph can have multiple risks as well. So don't shy away if you feel that a, parag that a paragraph can give you two good points, write it. Don't shy away from it, okay? Any questions, guys? It's a reminder that tomorrow we've got FR. Uh, Sim, the name of the question is Peach. It's from the latest exam. I'll send it on the group. On the WhatsApp group that we have, I'll, I'll send it over there, okay?
If you don't have any questions, guys, we'll end the session over here. And I'll see you guys if you're attempting FR. I'll see you tomorrow. For audit, we're going to have our next session next Friday. Okay? Just make sure that you stay connected. If, they, if you have any issues, my number is on the group. You can WhatsApp me. You can ask me. I'll guide you over a voice note. It's much easier. Right? I can't take calls because this is a very busy season. Uh, this month is very busy for me, so I can't take calls. But just... Uh, drop a message on WhatsApp and I'll reply to you, right? <clears throat> okay, guys, take care. I'll see you next week. No problem. Take care. Bye-bye.